Hello everyone, this video we are recording from uh, Chelyabinsk and today we will have a talk with a Serbian basketball player that uh, is currently playing here in uh, local basketball club Chel Basket, Luka Andrusic. We will ask Luka about uh, his experience of uh, playing in Russia. We will talk to him about how he sees Russian basketball through the eyes of a uh, Serbian basketball player. We will talk about basketball in Serbia and uh, we will ask Luka why from Serbia we have so many, uh, why they have in Serbia so many good um, players, so many good coaches. And generally we'll ask him a lot of uh, questions that uh, I think will be interesting to ask uh, international, play in, uh, international player playing in Russia. Luca, first of all, uh, thank you for uh, having time to do this podcast with us. Uh, a lot of questions uh, we prepared, so thank you for finding the time to do it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, really looking forward to this interview and hopefully I can share some of the interesting experiences that I had in my, in my career, in my life. Great. Luca, let's start from uh, just uh, meeting you a little bit more. Can you tell us about your playing experience? Uh, what countries have you played? How old are you? Um, just more about you as a player. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, following my uh, footsteps of my brother, I started playing when I was really young, you know, in Serbia when I was seven. Uh, played in Serbia f until I was 18. Uh, went through all the played in Partizan when I was younger, Hemofarm, which are the two of the bigger houses, like basketball houses in Serbia at that time. Um, played through all the national teams in Serbia, U16, U18. Uh, I was uh, third in European Championship uh, for, U <clears throat> for U18, second in the world for U19. Uh, after that, I moved to United States of America, went to college. Uh, first, I went to University of South Alabama in Division I school. After that, I transferred to the California University of Pennsylvania. Uh, it's a D2 school in, uh, near Pittsburgh. Uh, graduated in uh, 2018 uh, and after that I started playing professionally. Uh, played in Serbia for a couple of years, uh, went to Iran, had a year in Bosnia Herzegovina and now I'm here in uh, Chel Basket. Mm -hmm. And how old are you currently? 29. I'm 29. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, at the end of the year, I'll be 30. So, yeah, mm -hmm. played professionally for the last six years. Mm -hmm. And uh, how long have you been playing in Russia? Uh, this is my first year in Russia. This is uh, I came here in August, uh, started playing, uh, started off well. Unfortunately, I had an injury uh, at the beginning of the season after a couple of games. I uh, uh, hurt my shoulder during the game and uh, had a surgery. So right now I'm currently recovering. Everything is going well. I'm on the right path, so looking forward to you know mm -hmm. get better and be ready for the next season. Mm -hmm. Let's start with uh, Russian part, your experience exactly. of uh, living in Russia, playing in Russia. So first, uh, let's say just general question of uh, how is your life in Russia? How do you like it here? How do you like people over here? Yeah, I mean, it's been great so far. Uh, my older brother, he was playing in uh, Unix a couple of years ago and uh, I had a chance to visit and, you know, see a little bit more about it. Also, when I was younger, I was coming here for such uh, like tournaments and, you know, different kind of games with the national team. So I knew a little bit about Russian basketball, not so much. Uh, when I came here from the beginning, I really had a great experience. Uh, also, the same way for the city of the Chelyabinsk and also uh, experience in the club here. Uh, with people, everybody was very welcome with me uh, with open arms. Uh, had a great time and you know so far so good I mean really above my expectations mm -hmm. and uh, in what cities have you been in Russia so far who have been I visited Moscow of course uh, Kazan uh, this season um, of course Chelyabinsk I live here uh, this season uh, actually one of my favorite parts is when we went to play uh, Yerkutsk so I had a chance to see a great Baikal Lake it's really beautiful and like I said, unfortunately, I got injured in the beginning of the season, so we didn't have more, much time to travel with the, the team and, you know, go to all the games. Okay, maybe in preseason we went to Nizhny Novgorod, uh, you know, Yekaterinburg, so mm -hmm. had a chance to see a little bit. Yeah, so you traveled basically to one of uh, one of the most major Russian cities. So, like, uh, you as a person who belong around, you're from, let's say, Serbia, Europe, you mm -hmm. lived in the States. So what are your impressions of Russia, like as a country? How developed is it? Uh, 
uh, how uh, how developed Russia is the country in general and uh, in uh, sports? Uh, sure. I mean, you always hear the stories about the power of Russia in general. And I say to people who ask me the same question from back home, you don't really see it until you come here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like Russian people are really, how to say, same as Serbians in a way that uh, we have a big pride, like we're proud of our country. I think it's the same way with Russians. And you can really feel it when you live here. Uh, as far as uh, general infrastructure, I see all the cities are growing and expanding. I think Chelyabinsk is not considered as a big city of Russia. Top it's eight. Top eight, okay. But it's not like in, you know, top three or four like other cities, but I can see it grow from month to month and uh, it's developing really fast. And as far as the sports, it's the part that I like the most. And you can see it when you come here, how much uh, Russia is investing in sports. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a chance to go to watch hockey, Traktor, mm-hmm. which is playing semi-final, we're cheering for mm-hmm. them. Uh, really great experience, uh, the atmosphere, the organization, everything is on a, such a high level. Same with basketball. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it comes to organizing events, uh, games, uh, uh, conditions in the club, other cities, it's it's been amazing so far. I was really surprised uh, how much they actually, you know, pay attention to mm-hmm. all the small details when it mm-hmm. comes to, you know, organization and everything. Mm-hmm. So it's actually better than you, let's say, thought of that it, it, then it is over there. Uh, yeah, 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 sure. I mean, it's the best that I had so far in my career. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, I knew a little bit about the league and everything when I came, but mm-hmm. I didn't know it that that much, you know. So mm-hmm. when I came, I actually it's it's been better than than mm-hmm. I expected, to be honest with you. And tell us about uh, the um, you're playing Russian Super League, which is uh, second division of uh, Russian basketball. Mm-hmm. So what is your impression of uh, level of the league? Uh, what it can be compared to? Uh, if we do comparison to some like European leagues, maybe Serbian leagues, and how well the championship generally is organized? Yeah, uh, from the big. I mean, the first thing I can say is that uh, they really invest in their own players. I would say because because the, there is only two international players allowed in Super League, uh, which uh, I think is uh, really good for younger kids in Russia. Uh, the first and the biggest difference that I noticed when I came and we started playing was the physicality of the game comparing to Serbia. Mm-hmm. It's much more physical, uh, lesser scoring games, uh, mm-hmm. uh, some, I would say, <laughs> rough contact is allowed sometimes, you know, so mm-hmm. it took me a, a little bit of time to get used to this, comparing it to, you know, Serbian basketball and mm-hmm. uh, everything. But uh, uh, as far as the quality, I think uh, they have really good potential, especially like I like I was saying before, because they invest so much, and I think uh, there is a good potential to develop even more mm-hmm. in the future. Uh, a lot of great talent, I can mm-hmm. say. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like a, a combination of talent and experience, I would say, because there is teams that have a couple of really experienced guys who were playing in this league for a long time, and then you have a, like a development teams of bigger teams like CSKA, Zenit, who are you know investing in young players and some really really good players are coming in the future. It's my mm-hmm. opinion from the first year. Mm-hmm. Of course, I didn't have that much of a games because of my injury this year. So if I stay hopefully here next year, I can you know give you a little bit more yeah. info about it. But this is this is what I noticed from the you know get go. Mm-hmm. Uh, and how do you compare the level of uh, this league um, with um, let's say European level? Would it be competitive against uh, let's say second league or golf? I don't know. Maybe Spain, France, Germany, or something like that. Oh, that's that's a that's a good question. I mean, I had a chance to play in Serbia and uh, in Bosnia and Iran, so I can speak from my experience. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't, I know about other leagues, but I can I don't like to speak sometimes when uh, you know I wasn't a part of it. Mm-hmm. But uh, comparing it to comparing it to other leagues, I think. Uh, what can I say? I mean, to be honest with you, the 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 I would say. Like I said, physicality is way different. I think uh, this is the only difference that I would say it's like really that you can notice. Mm-hmm. When it comes to quality of the players, when it comes to, uh, you know, organization, I think uh, maybe European 
basketball is maybe a little bit like Serbian basketball is maybe a little bit better when it comes to actual players, maybe mm -hmm. the quality of the teams. I wouldn't say, of course, not to you know underestimate anybody. It's just from my experience. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to organization and you know other things, I think this is much more advanced than a lot of the leagues. Mm -hmm. And the conditions that we get, uh, for example, myself in this club, I can even compare it with some of the clubs that are playing in much higher leagues in Europe, not mm -hmm. only like you mm -hmm. know low level leagues. I mean, and we are talking about the bigger, bigger clubs, which I tell to everybody back home. Sometimes they don't believe me mm -hmm. because Russian Super League is not followed that much, you know, mm -hmm. in, in the rest of the Europe. And they don't know anything about it. But I tell them, okay, this is what I have. This is infrastructure, like, and they don't believe me. Like, as you can see now, we're sitting in this kind of an office and I'm telling you 90% of the mm -hmm. uh, teams in, in, in Serbia or somewhere in Europe, they don't have these kind of conditions. So mm -hmm. I think their Russian Super League is in the right path to, you know, uh, become even better. And I feel like with this infrastructure, and maybe a little bit better marketing towards European markets, I think it can be, you know, in great shape for the mm -hmm. next couple of years. Mm -hmm. So you would say it's kind of a little bit underseen by the yes, world? I, I would say so. Here. I would say so. And um, when I got here, I knew because I had a friend who was coach and uh, assistant coach in Nizhny Novgorod, and he mm -hmm. told me that it's a good market. Mm -hmm. And he recommended me to the agent from Russia, and it seemed interesting to me. And it was the best, the best decision that I could have made, you know. And uh, like I told you at the beginning, I didn't know much about it because it's under scenes, maybe underrated also. Mm -hmm. But when you come here, you can actually see uh, how much more actually they are ahead of everybody when it comes to certain things. But I think uh, players don't know too much about it to actually come here and you know, mm -hmm. play. So. Mm -hmm. And as for you, your experience of uh, playing over here in Chelyabinsk, uh, Chelyabinsk is, um, as you already know, as most probably our viewers know, is a kind of very growing uh, region in yes. terms of uh, basketball. One of uh, Federation is one of, uh, I would say, now most uh, active and uh, most known. Um, so what is your experience like with the club, with, uh, let's say, organizational things, the staff, the uh, like conditions you get provided? Yeah. So what do you, what would you say about it and uh, like how do you like to be yeah, yeah, part yeah. of this club? I mean, I will tell you a story when I came here first time and everybody like my wife asked me how do you feel, how is everything before she came here with my son. The first thing I said, I, I think I can see myself here on a long term, and for a few reasons. First of all, when I came here, people took me, you know, really great. They welcomed me, you know. Uh, with open arms and uh, literally gave me, how to say, gave me everything I need to, you know, be successful and to do my job the best the way I can. And uh, uh, conditions in the club were amazing. They invest a lot. They, you know, give their players the best possible conditions to to be successful. And I think this is the most important. You want to give players another, I would say, extra motivation to you know, work better, work hard, and when a player comes here and see all the stuff that the club is doing for for each for the team, I think it's just a, another extra motivation, you know, at least for me, to get better and to work. Uh, I liked the project from the beginning because this is a young club, uh, especially in the Super, Super League. It's a first year, but what I like the most is the the plan for the future. I think uh, they have a great long term plan and the people around the club are very serious about it. So I think it's not, uh, you have a lot of those projects that are like fake, you know, and they last for a year or two and, you know, boost tons of money and invest huge money. And then after two years, they just break. Mm -hmm. But I think people here, they do everything, you know, planned. And this is the best part about it. And that's why I could see myself here stay for a, for a long time, because I want to be a part of that kind of a project. It's also good for me and I think it's also good for the club. And even though it's a first year in the Super League uh, and the results this year were not that, I would say not that good, because we, I think it's part of, part of it is because we had a little bit of issues with the injuries and you know, it's a first year, so it's kind of like a pilot year to see where we're at and to see everything how it looks. But uh, even though we didn't have that much of a good results, I think we are already well respected 
in the Russian, you know, federation because the people that work here and what people are actually doing here. I think it's a great job so far. So hopefully, hopefully, you know, we can manage to, at least for myself, to get kind mm -hmm. of, a, you know, long term, long term cooperation. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, sorry, I mean, it also the yeah. big part is that Chelyabinsk is a city is great for the family as well. Mm -hmm. It's not a huge city and you can be everywhere in time. You got every, time for everything. Uh, it's great for a family life. I have a one year old, one year old son and, uh, you know, people around the club, everything I needed, they were there to help me with my family, with, uh, apartments, with everything I needed. And also hi to my, one of my Serbian friends who live here for 15 years. So he kind uh, my friend Mika, who also helped me to adjust even better. He knows people from the club for a long time now because he's lived here for the last 15 years and kind of, you know, make my life easier here. So it's been great so far, to be honest with you. And I was sad that I got injured at the beginning because I think we could have done much better. And I think I had a lot more to show, but we will see for the future what's mm -hmm. going to happen. And why did you decide to come to play in Russia? Because, uh, you know, you have current geopolitical situation. A lot of people are, I think, maybe scared or whatever, mm -hmm. concerned of coming here. So, like, why did you decide to continue your career in Russia and weren't you maybe afraid of uh, current um, situation? No, I mean, not really. And um, before I got here, I knew a lot of players who came back here to play after the situation that happened. And uh, to be honest with you, I never really thought that, you know, I would not be safe. Mm -hmm. I in, When I came here, I felt nothing but safe. And uh, it's a good market. And I always say it's a good market. I think it's a market that is growing and uh, especially for the international experience, maybe because uh, you really get a chance. If you get into this market, considering that there is only two international players per team allowed, I feel like you really got a good chance to uh, make a living here in, uh, in, you know, in a sense that what I noticed in Russian league, actually, if you, you know, give a good impression first year they like to take care of you uh you know they they respect you more and uh, i think this is good for myself and i think whoever comes here if you if you do well if you're a normal person if you're not some kind of a you know bad, bad guy or whatever i think they take care of you really well and mm -hmm. you know if people you respect pe the people they respect you back exactly exactly mm -hmm. exactly and that's especially if you show uh, good stuff on the court it's even it's even bigger plus, but I think uh, here it's more about the personality. They respect that part mm -hmm. more. They don't look at you only as you know basketball player and mm -hmm. what you how many points you score. It's just that human part that you know plays the role. So. Yeah, human part indeed. I think yes. plays a big role over here because if you take Western role, Western world, it's like they take you as a kind of like employee a worker. Yes, a worker. And here it's kind of all together. You can yeah. be a great player, but if you are disrespectful if you are they don't care they don't know, care you like can score 25 points yeah. but if you disrespect you know your team your teammates your coach mm -hmm. people from the club they don't care about it i think it's the first being a great human and then uh, yeah. you know being being a basketball player yeah and a uh, question comes from this um, as you probably heard as uh, we all know now that uh, as we knew before, Russia and Serbia is kind of a brotherhood country in yeah. terms of our, uh, let's say, spirit. Mm -hmm. And um, do you feel it uh, or hear that uh, kind of you are in uh, home, away from home? Do you feel like uh, this connection between our <laughs> nations, our countries? Uh, most definitely, most definitely. I mean, I wouldn't say we're that similar, but uh, I told you at the beginning, the pride thing, it's what stood out to me. In Serbia, we are really proud of who we are. We are a small country. We are proud of who we are. We are, you know, uh, happy to be Serbians and all of that. And when I came here in Russia, it's the same thing. It's You can feel that people are really proud of themselves and what, what country of Russia stood, stands for, you know. And uh, I think that's one of the parts that connects us. Also, the religion plays, plays a big part considering that we are Orthodox brothers, as, the, as as we like to say it in Serbia. And I think the spiritual uh, way of looking things, sometimes it's even more important than actual, you know, just, I would say, business or anything else or 
actual people. I think spiritual way is sometimes more important. I think it's what connects us and people here really, really respect Orthodox religion or in Serbia also. Uh, so, I mean, it, it, I think that's that with pride for each country, that that's what connects us, you know. Mm -hmm. And also the language is somewhat similar. I would say when you speak it, it's a little bit, you know, different. It's hard to learn, but a lot of similar words, uh, a lot of similar phrases, uh, which helped me in the beginning to, you know, get adjusted. So those are the few things that connect us and you can really feel it. I mean, every time I came here and somebody asked me where I'm from, uh, I said from Serbia, everybody's like, oh, bracha, Serbi, Rusi, bracha, zauvek. It's the phrase that mm -hmm. everybody's saying and everybody knows. In both countries. So, yes, in both countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, it's been, it's been, it's been great to, you know, have that kind of, uh, you know, mm -hmm. experiences here. And what would you say are differences between uh, between us, between Russians and Serbians? Oh, that's that's a really good question. That's a really good question. I think just the size, maybe. Mm -hmm. It's because uh, Russian is Russia is so spread out. I think some people from Europe, or actually the world. Uh, to be honest with you, when I came to Chelyabinsk, I didn't know. I knew, I heard about a city, but I, I didn't know. What to expect? What to expect because Russia is so big that you don't like you have so many hidden, I would say, hidden gems, hidden mm -hmm. cities that are actually nice and cool. But people only, you know, pay attention to Moscow, St. Peter, you know, in the big cities, which is normal because it's such a huge land that you cannot even, you know, you don't even I don't even I still don't know a lot of the stuff and I'm mm -hmm. planning to learn more. But I think it's just that it's too many people. And when it comes to Serbia, it's pretty much, you know, small country. Uh, a lot of the stuff that is happening is happening in Belgrade. It's like half of the population is in one city, so it's 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 kind of you know. But other than that, I mean, to be honest, and the weather, of course, it's it's uh, different Russia than any. Is also the, different it's it's different regions. It's different than everywhere, but I like it here in Chelyabinsk that we get a lot of the sun during the year because mm -hmm. of the position, as I understood. So it's even if it's minus thirty, and it's sunny outside, it's you know you can handle it. So mm -hmm. that's, that's the biggest difference. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, let's go to your next part of basketball journey, Iran, uh, which is also interesting country and yeah. a kind of, um, let's say, closed country, not, not so closed, but maybe unknown country in terms of how people live there, how is, as you know, it's very, uh, sanctioned country. So can you share of your experience uh, in Iran, just generally how it was over there? How do people live? Do they have like, uh, I don't know what cars they drive? Do they have like uh, international yeah. brands? So just like your... Uh, yeah, it's, your uh, it, was, it was, I mean, really, really from Iran, I took really great experiences and uh, oof, that's, I think people are looking too much sometimes at the media and what media portrays in the, you know, to the people, to the public. And I think uh, in most of the times that's not the case. So it was the same thing when I went to Iran, you know, you can hear on, you know, on TVs, on news, certain things. And then when you go there, it's a completely different situation. First of all, the people is, the people are amazing. I mean, I honestly, felt so welcome that people took me with such great care and uh, I was really, really impressed with that. They're kind of similar uh, in a way to Serbian people also because, you know, they like to have, a, uh, you know, family together all the time. They like to have family dinners. They like to have, you know, fun in between them. You can really feel the love in between the people. And that's what stood out the most. The most. And also Iran is also a country that is really, you know, I would say known for its power, it's a, like a lot of it's a lot of the population, and it's a great city. In the past, it was one of the strongest countries in the world. And once you get once you go there and learn a little bit more about history, then you realize, uh, you know, about their you know value in the past and what they brought brought to the table. And also now, I think it's it's also a country that is developing. Uh, one thing that is different, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say different. It's just the way they are. It's like uh, you have certain limitations due to their religion, uh, you know, such as wearing a long pants if you're a man. Uh, if you're a girl, <clears throat> uh, you cannot show your, I would say, in a 
slang maybe you cannot show your body that much in the public you know mm. uh, which I also respect which I also which I also think it's you a great thing you know, uh, uh, yeah you, you gotta have a scarf arms. on your hair yeah. and stuff like this but uh, it's the way they are I mean it's their it's it's part of their culture and uh, you have to respect it when you're there and uh, it's really interesting to see you know and to me that wasn't such a big issue uh, so that was one thing that you have to do. There is no alcohol, there is, there is no clubs, there is no, you know, certain things that are maybe, uh, I would say, you know, uh, in focus in some other countries. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit different when it comes to that lifestyle. But other than that, I mean, food is amazing. Uh, people are amazing. So many graces also to see. And it's the oldest civilization in the world. Mm -hmm. Persian Persian people and it's mm -hmm. it's amazing to hear so, as someone who likes history it was amazing to me to you know learn about it and you know talk about it with them with the people who actually uh, went through all the situations that they had in the past so it's it's been an amazing experience when it comes to different things uh, cars are really domestic based I think I, I, I'm not sure 100% but a few years ago or in the past, they kind of turned more to the domestic manufacturing, especially when it comes to cars. So they drive their own, I don't know, I can't remember the name of the the brand, but uh, driving is pretty chaotic, I would say, in Iran. There is mm -hmm. like no lanes. Uh, mm -hmm. You can literally drive <laughs> however you want. And uh, I wasn't trying it, but when I was in a you know, taxi and driving with my teammates, it was kind of chaotic to see. But it's the way they function and it's the way they've been for the years back. So you get used to everything. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to basketball, I think also a country that invests a lot of the money in the sports. Basketball is popular over there. Yeah, really popular, really popular. And they have such great crowds, you know, and uh, when you play against certain teams, you get like five, ten thousand people cheering mm -hmm. for their team. It's, it's, it gets pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't have luck to experience that much because I was playing there during COVID year. Mm -hmm. So there was no crowd, but uh, right now I have some friends that are playing and I can see the videos. It's, it's, it's crazy and people really, really enjoy it. And one thing that I like the most because I'm an athlete, it's the Olympic setter that I had. They built uh, this huge Olympic setter with a football stadium, basketball arena, swimming pools. They even had like a fake lake for, you know, uh, kayak drivings mm -hmm. for, and it's a huge complex. I don't even know how big and it was built I would say 50, 60 years ago, maybe. And it's amazing that to have all of the sports connected in such a huge, huge land. I, I don't think many countries have that. And to me, that was really, really great to see, you know. Mm -hmm. It's it's really the infrastructure of, of that complex and everything was really well made. And as someone who likes sports, I was really impressed with it. So, uh, but also, one thing that I always say, it's uh, whatever you go, I think it's not about the actual country and where you live and all that. I think it's about the people that you're around. And I think whatever you go, even if you go in a place with a thousand people or if you go in a city with uh, 15 million people, I think it's about the people that you're surrounded with, you know, and the people are actually the ones who are giving you the, the experience. And that's what connects you to the certain place. So, and I try to, you know, live my life in that way to connect with people not with the actual places of course i like to see everything and to learn and everything but i think the people are ones who are keeping that fire in between you know yeah. so mm -hmm. moving to serbia um main question that is in my head in heads of uh, i think a lot of people who watch serbian basketball is why in serbia you have so many good players, so many good coaches, why your system produces uh, so many uh, good players, world-class players. Uh, so like, what is the system? What is the secret of Serbian system? Uh, why they produce yeah, that's, big names every year? That's a good question always, but it's, uh, I think the question that nobody can actually give a 100% correct answer, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, maybe uh, older, I would say coaches and players that you know, we're in charge of, you know, building this culture. But from my experience, I think it's about the willing to learn and the fundamentals. Uh, we talk a lot about uh, fundamentals. 
And I think it's the key to the success in basketball because uh, even when I was seven, eight years old, I was learning stuff that I'm using today. And it's not a cliche, it's not like some fake story, it, it really is. And I think what coaches do in Serbia, like they, they, from the very young age, they teach kids the right ways of playing the game. They don't, okay, they let you play, they let you have fun, but there are certain things that you need to follow in order to be on a team, to play, to give you playing time and everything. I think that's what separates us because <clears throat> uh, when you go to the, let's say, more senior level, when you go into, you know, 15, 16, 17 in the teens, and then after that, when you move to the pro level, I think you're ready for it because You've been through all these things. You learn about the fundamentals. Uh, you learn to play the right way. Uh, you, you learn how to play as a grown man when you're younger. And I think you can see now in today's basketball, the more and more players uh, who are from Europe are having a success even in the NBA. And I think this is the case, especially two of the best players in the world are Luka Doncic and Nikola Jokic. Of course, they're one of one. It's, you can't compare anybody to them because those type of players and, and personalities are once in a hundred years. But when they were kids, they were playing on a high level. They were taught the right way. They played with, uh, I would say, grown men. And when they came to the big stage, they were ready for it. And uh, it's a combination about, with fundamentals, uh, with learning the game the right way. And I think uh, that's, that's the most important thing. For, for a basketball player, especially, especially for young kids, you know. A lot of the times I think uh, kids are looking at uh, YouTube videos, they're looking at the games and they see the pros, the way they play. I mean, they see the final product, I know. And uh, sometimes uh, they try to imitate this and it's not great to, to look at it. You see the final product, but all those players, they went through a certain period of time when they were focusing on many different things, such as fundamentals, the, being at the right spot at the right time, uh, learning how to be a teammate, learning how to be a great person, how to help the team in different ways, not just scoring. And it's the part that people in Serbia focus a lot, the coaches. And uh, I think that's probably the biggest biggest thing why we are where we at and why we have so much success. Mm -hmm. And uh, to compare to Russia, uh, mm -hmm. in Russia we have a lot of good role players, uh, but we don't have uh, so much stars. Uh, the players who can be like leader of the team on elite level, let's say EuroLeague level, NBA level, EuroCup level, uh, maybe one of, uh, if we take like for last seven, 10 years, only like that level, maybe Alexei Shved. Uh, but as we discussed, we have infrastructure, we have clubs, we have a lot of investments from the government in basketball. So what do you think? Why uh, Russia doesn't have so many uh, world level players and coaches and Serbia has? What's, yeah, uh, like to me, to me, uh, I had a chance to meet uh, and, uh, when I was in Iran. Uh, in Iran, I was also playing Anton Pongrashov mm -hmm. uh, in a different team, but we, he played with my friend on the same team and we used to hang around a lot. And I always ask him the same question. And uh, to be honest with you, I didn't know the answer, but, and right now, if you ask me, I don't know. I think maybe comparing it to Serbia, uh, I think uh, as much as, uh, let me put it this way, as much as in infrastructure and the conditions are sometimes good for the kids, for experience, I think maybe sometimes it's even bad for the kids in a case that they get everything they need when they're too younger, early. too young, too early. And uh, I would not say they don't respect that, but it's just uh, they don't suffer that much, if mm -hmm. we can call it this yeah. way. And to be honest, in Serbia, like I used to practice in schools that didn't even have the, the real basketball court lines or in the clubs where you don't you don't get the shoes to play in. You have to buy your own shoes. Your parents have to, you know, uh, separate half of your their salary to, to buy your shoes for practicing. Uh, you know, we didn't have those things when we were kids and because mm -hmm. of it was honestly poor. Even today in Serbia, it's it's not greatly developed that part of infrastructure. So we had to fight for it. You know, you have to fight for your spot. You have to, you know, and a lot of the because we're such a small country and a lot of basketball, uh, a lot of kids wants to play basketball and the competition was huge. So we had to fight for everything. And I think here, uh, 
maybe kids are being kids, which is okay. And they don't know, they're kind of more relaxed because they know they have everything. Uh, but I think that's part on the coaches, you know, to teach them the right way, to tell them what they need to do, to kind of push them more to the mm -hmm. limits. And I think this is the biggest difference, to be honest with you. And it starts from the young age. Okay, you become professional after 18 and after 20, you maybe play on the highest level. But I think f at the young age, you learn about the uh, work ethic, you learn about, uh, you know, right and wrong and everything that comes uh, you know, after that, which is being a professional basketball player. And I think in Russia, that part is a little bit, I don't know. They feel themselves professionals uh, at too early age. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. And uh, I think it's part of the coaches. I think mm -hmm. kids here, there is a lot of talented kids and I think the coaches are the ones who need to push them. I'm not saying there is a great coaches here too, but I think it's just that part when they're younger, they need to learn the right values. I talked to one of my friends yesterday who is actually here for the camp from Serbia. I had a coach when I was 15 and in today when I play, I mean, I still use the same things that he taught me when I was 15. So it's nothing different. It's nothing like, okay, you go to professional basketball and now you trying to, you know, learn something crazy or, I don't know, some to expect something that you never seen before. It's actually what I did in 15, 16. I'm doing right now. I'm just, just doing a much higher level, mm -hmm. getting faster. My body is developing, you know, you're playing with better players. So you have to adjust certain things. But when it comes to basics, it's all the same. It's basketball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the part that I think coaches play the biggest role with kids. And I think that's what needs to be here a little bit, I would say, to push them a little more. Mm -hmm. So you mean to educate them more what it takes in order to play on the highest level, right? Yes, How yes, to, yes, like, uh, yes, yes. Instead of the conditions yes, yes. they get to... Yeah, and uh, to be honest with you, to, to when you have all of this, mm. I always say use it. Use it the best way you can because when you come to a certain age and you, if you don't succeed, you will regret the chances that you didn't take. And... I'm not here to say that I'm like, you know, I'm not playing in EuroLeague level, I'm not his greatest player, but basketball is my life. It's how I make living for me and my family. And, you know, it's my job. And uh, I always say, you, you want to use everything that you're given because you don't want to regret after that, that you lost in the why, why I didn't do it. Yeah. I could have done this or I could have done that. It's, it's the worst feeling ever, mm -hmm. which I don't, I don't want to feel and <laughs> and that's always my advice when someone or advice or when people ask me you know how you want to do it what's your what's your purpose i just i just always say i don't want to regret that i didn't try that i didn't do my best to you know be, be as best as i can mm -hmm. so. and uh, you most probably see the training processes of uh, sports schools in russia at least uh, one example of uh, chelyabinsk youth teams which are right now i would say you uh, developing in a good way, mm -hmm. they have good coaches, good infrastructure, yes. everything that we described. Yeah. Uh, so how the training processes uh, in Russian sports schools, at least from what you saw, are different from the training processes of sports schools in Serbia? Uh, yeah, I mean, the competition is the big part. I think in Serbia, we started competing very young. Even when I started playing when I was seven, I at eight years old, I already started playing, I don't know, 40, 50 games per year. Mm -hmm. and I, I think, think we do the same. It's like, uh, I don't know, we, but we play a lot of games. I don't know how it is, but it's, it's yeah. I don't know, maybe just that competing part. It's you, even when you're a kid, you play for the result, I would say, you know, mm -hmm. you play to win. Even mm -hmm. though you, I was nine years old, I was still playing to win every game. Mm -hmm. And it's this constant battle. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, comparing it to Serbia, I think uh, it's different a little bit because in Serbia, it's a, really small country with a lot of kids that wants to play basketball it's mm -hmm. really hard to you know kind of be on the top of it because it's so small but mm -hmm. also so many people that wants to play and here it's a bit different because it's, i mean it's competition you can say it's even bigger because of bigger population but i think you have many chances i would say here mm -hmm. many you know because you have all the great cities here, you have all the infrastructure, especially you mentioned Chelbasket. I think here people are 
really, really in the right path because they want to learn. They're new, they know they're new, and they already have, you know, good system in place. But what separates them from, I think it's the willing to learn even more. And I don't know, I mean, just, it's hard. It's, it's really hard question to compare because mm -hmm. sometimes there are questions that cannot be answered. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's uh, the coaching staff, maybe it's just the player, maybe it's the culture. And also one thing that plays the, the role, I think it's, I think in basketball in Russia, it's not such a, it's not a sport number one, I would say. It's, I think maybe. Yeah, it's like. Top five maybe, but yeah, not yeah, even maybe top three. five. Yeah. And when you go to Serbia, I think, in my opinion, it's number one. Yeah. And here people are more based more on winter sports, which is, of course, natural. And uh, also it could be, you know, a role that plays because people are not that much focused on basketball uh, as much as, for example, I was watching the tractor game a couple of days ago and the atmosphere there was crazy. Like, like basketball in Serbia. Uh, yeah. Okay. No, don't, <laughs> okay. Don't, 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 don't go there. It's, <laughs> it's not comparable, but, uh, but uh, it was crazy. Like comparing it with basketball in Russia mm -hmm. and the hockey game in Russia, I was like, what? What's going on? I was, I was, I, I couldn't believe it. And it was a great atmosphere, great show, especially because Tractor is doing so well this year. It was like packed. You couldn't put needle in the stands. And, and I mean, it was amazing. And then in uh, our games, our gym is full, but it's kind of like a different atmosphere. I think people are not and very familiar. And it's much smaller also. Yeah. And I think people are not very familiar with actual basketball. I think they get more understanding for some other sports. And, I think this is one of the reasons it plays a big role in why basketball is not where it should be, maybe, you know. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. I mean, of course, you had great players in the in the past, you know, and great success in the Olympics, in world champion, in the European Championship. But lately, I think, I for some things, it maybe takes time, you know, maybe it will change. We will see. Mm -hmm. And uh, last part of questions from your international experience is about the States. Mm -hmm. uh, you played in college. Mm -hmm. um, you came there as, um, as you mentioned, this kind of prepared mm -hmm. player. So you played in partisan youth uh, generations, you played mm -hmm. in the Serbian national teams. Uh, uh, so uh, playing in the States, what, uh, what experience, uh, actually what you got from this experience from playing in the States, and uh, what uh, maybe difficulties you had over there uh, throughout your those yeah. four years in college? Uh, it's probably one of the best experiences of my life, to be honest with you. Uh, when it comes to, I would say, let's say professional level, the one thing that I learned and which I follow to this day, it's the work ethic. It's, you have to uh, be ready for that you have to be ready that sometimes it's going to be really hard to respect all the rules to uh, be everywhere where you need to be and over there you're taught to respect everything both school and uh, education and also basketball and if you're not good in education if you don't have good grades you will not play you will not be on a team and uh, that's why i said work ethic you were taught how to be in every class to listen to learn to you know have good grades to do your homework to respect the school part and also on a basketball court you also have to follow certain regulations and certain rules you know practices workouts uh, lifting uh, basketball team practices uh, meetings everything you need to know and your day is kind of full every day you don't have that much time to think about other things or you know and uh, because if you do, then you will miss in school, you will maybe not really 100% ready for practice. And when those two suffer, then your place in the team is questionable because over there, the one thing that it's not bad, it's actually good. But if, if you put it in a bad category is that you're replaceable. Mm -hmm. It's really like that. You're replaceable because people from all over the world, people from all over the world, they want to go there. They want to play there. Everybody wants to experience mm -hmm. college level because it's great for the kids. You're still a kid. And from 18 to 22, it's the best part of your life. You're having fun. You want to go to parties. You're going to, you know, experience everything that you see on a TV, whatever, whatever. But if you're not doing your job, you're easily replaceable. It can go easy like that. And I think sometimes people who go there, 
and uh, are not ready for that system, they, they suffer. You know, they come back earlier, they don't finish the school, they don't graduate. And I think it's good and bad, but to me, it was a motivation. It mm -hmm. was uh, something that I, I say, I said to myself, okay, I'm here and I want to use the best of the chance. You know, in school, I was trying to do the best I can in practices as well. And, you know, I had a great experience, graduated, I have a diploma and, you know, it was, it was overall a great experience to me. Mm -hmm. Basketball wise, uh, I think uh, when I got there, uh, it was like a lot of different rules than actual European basketball that I was used to. Especially because the three-point line was really smaller when I was playing college basketball. Now it's the same as in Europe, but when I was playing, it was our European old three-point line. And it's sometimes harder to play because you don't have the three-second rule like you have in an NBA and uh, a lot of really physical bodies over there, as you probably know and <laughs> you see. And not much spacing. And so not much uh, spacing, so it's like really... It was good for me because I'm a shooter, so, you know, I had my ways of scoring the other way, but it took me some time to get used to the physicality plus the shrinking floor. It's sometimes can be challenging, but of course, everything you do, you know, you get used to it and you learn and, you know, find your ways to do the best you can. Mm -hmm. So, And coming experience. from uh, Serbia, which, if not the best youth championship uh, in the world, then maybe, I don't know, top two, top three, like Serbia, Spain, whatever else. Uh, how challenging it was for you to adapt to um, American college basketball, which most probably the strongest uh, youth league in the world? Uh, it was it was it was challenging for sure. If I say here, if it's easy, it's not easy. It's challenging because, uh, especially when you come in and as a freshman, and then you have all the guys that that were there for a couple of years already, that have some experience of playing it. Uh, you know, sometimes you have to wait in the line maybe to get your playing time, which is not hard, especially it was not, which is not easy, especially it was not easy for me at the beginning because when I was in Serbia, I was... National you know, team player. I was national team player. Yeah. I was always playing and I never, like 25 plus minutes was a low, low playing game for me. Mm -hmm. So I was used to the playing time and uh, once I got to Division One level, especially, it was challenging, you know, to get that... Uh, you had to prove yourself yeah, again. Yeah, a little more. Mm -hmm. Again, from basically you start from the scratch. Mm -hmm. And that's that connects to the point that I said uh, earlier, that you're replaceable. You basically start from zero and you have to prove yourself all over again. They don't care. Okay, your national team, it's what brought you there. It's what, it's what gave me a scholarship, you know, made my life a little easier. But other than that, you're as equal as everybody else. Nobody's going to look at you different eyes if you're a national team player from Serbia. No. You have to prove yourself. You have to show everybody that you are better than other guys that came came there before you and to fight for your spot. And at the beginning it was challenging, but I like to consider myself as someone who, you know, never give up and someone who likes to take challenges and, uh, you know, and for someone who has a quality. And I believe that if you work on it and if you do the right things, I think it comes out. And to me, I think it was a success after that. When I transferred to schools, I was doing really good. Uh, so, I mean, at the end of the day, it was great. Mm -hmm. I managed to fight for myself uh, to do well. And it really, one of the best experiences of my life, so, mm -hmm. for sure. Luca, last question I have is, uh, share from your experience uh, tips that you can get, uh, that you can give to young basketball players to become professionals. Ooh, that's good. Uh, listen to your coaches is first. Uh, work on yourself every day. Uh, establish your work ethic, something that you believe in, that you feel comfortable in. Of course, have fun. It's mm -hmm. still a game. And all the things that we're talking about are important when it comes to working and, uh, you know, respecting everything, but it's still a game. You want mm -hmm. to love what you do. And I think any job you do, you have to love it in order to be successful. And with basketball, it's the same. That's the last thing I have to say. Just enjoy it, but give your best. It's, it's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Enjoy it and give your best. It's mm -hmm. all you can do. It's all you can control, basically. Certain things you cannot control, but to be at 100% level all the time, to work 100% and to enjoy the game, that's what you can control. And that's my best advice. Mm -hmm. Luca, that's all the questions that I have, uh, that I had. Thank you for this uh, interesting conversation. Really? I think it was uh, a lot of 
interesting uh, experience yeah. from your side, a lot of interesting yep. uh, knowledge. So I'm happy that you had it and um, thank you for... No problem. Thank you for having me again and, you know, it was, it was a good talk. It was a good talk. I liked it.